Hi, welcome to the XRD Lab. Um, this is one of our XRD instruments. It's one of our larger instruments. Um, and this particular instrument has some features uh, which are very useful for the study of cultural artifacts, as I'll explain. So here we have um, sort of not a traditional X-ray source, but one of our high brilliance microsource X-ray sources. And so what this generates is a very high intensity but small spot X-ray beam, like a laser pointer. Um, so you can target small areas on your sample and collect information um, just on features of interest and nothing surrounding it. That couples with a large 2D detector, an area detector. And so because you're targeting just a small area, but it's diffracting in all directions, having a large detector really helps to collect as much diffraction information as you can, even though it's only a small sampling volume. And then finally, a laser video microscope. And this is useful for sample positioning, as you'll see. This comes with a calibrated microscope image, so you can precisely target areas and know that the X-ray beam is hitting sort of the center of the camera reticle and not the surrounding areas. Um, and then the laser comes in at an angle, and so that helps you to sort of align the sample height in order to get accurate peak positions for phase ID. So altogether, it makes for a really simple to use platform for doing analysis on um, bulk artifacts, such as this sort of ceramic art that we got from Mexico. Um, so you can target different regions on it, uh, collect XRD, and then move to different regions. And then do it all non-destructively. You don't have to grind anything down or do um, any kind of destructive measurements. Just plop it on, drive it to the position you want to measure, and go. Um, so for this particular artifact, we can see there's sort of a a front side and a back side. And the front side has, um, it's all glazed, um, painted with different colors. And so one thing we could do um, is sort of look at each color and see what the different pigments are. Um, or if we turn it around, what we can see is there's actually a part that's not glazed at all around sort of the outside of it. So what we could try to do is um, measure sort of just the bare ceramic and then drive next to it onto the glazed part and see if we find anything different on the glaze compared to the the unglazed regions. So to mount it on the instrument, um, I'm not going to do anything special. I just have sort of a thing to stabilize it. And then I'm just going to set it down here and then trust the stage and the camera to help position it more precisely. So the sample's on the instrument. And I'm going to go over to the computer. Um, <clears throat> here is the measurement software. And if I click to the video tab, you can see sort of the, the camera image. Uh, and so this is showing us sort of at the center of the crosshairs exactly where the x-ray beam is going to hit. So I can position it anywhere I like. All right, so here we are on the sort of looks like some part of the unglazed region. Um, here we can turn on the laser. And in order to set the sample height, you need to adjust Z position until the laser is in the center of the camera reticle. So you can do that either just by typing it in or using the sliders. So I just show the sliders. Um, so this is the Z slider. And if I click and hold it, you can see that the image is getting more in focus and the laser is moving towards the center. Um, which means that the sample is at the right height for measurement. And there it is. So now the sample is aligned. We have the area that we want to measure. So all I have to do is hit start. This is set to a couple of two theta theta scan, just like sort of more traditional XRD. Um, so start, stop, time per step, same settings. Um, but because we're having an area detector, instead of having just sort of a, a single line going across the image, we have sort of a 2D frame sweeping from left to right, as you'll see. So while we're waiting for this image to appear, um, I should point out, I mentioned this is a spot beam. Um, and so you might be wondering, how, how big is the spot? 
Uh, and so for this particular source, the maximum, maximum spot size is two millimeters, but then we have different collimators you could put in front. So depending on the sampling volume you're, you're going for, the feature size that you're looking at, you can have different size collimators to cut the x-ray beam down to that size so there's only information coming from that feature and none of the surrounding area. Um, so right now, I'm not really targeting a small area. You can see it fills the camera image just with the bare ceramic, but I have a um, one millimeter collimator. So all the diffraction information is coming from this very central region in between the first hashes. This is 0.5 millimeter hashes on the, on the reticle. So this is, where, this is where the diffraction information is coming from. So if I go back to the main display, we should see some image. There we go. So essentially what you have in, in 2D diffraction is uh, diffraction rings uh, <clears throat> rather than diffraction peaks. And instantaneously you can see just by looking at how filled in the rings are, um, if you have sort of sufficient sampling to get accurate phase identification for your, for your phase ID. Um, so here it's a little bit spotty, so maybe we don't have quite enough crystallites, but then this ring is very filled in, so this one is probably going to give a very accurate peak intensity. This is more information than you could get, um, for example, doing a traditional XRD scan. And it, it's nice to get some confidence in the data. On the secondary display, you can sort of see a preview of the integrated data, and so this is where we'll actually do search match and phase ID. So, I've actually done this scan already before, so I'm just going to jump over to the scan I took um, already, um, just to save a little time. So this is our evaluation software called diffract.eva, and once the scan completes and you save it, you can just load this, the frame into EVA and it looks something like this. And the first step for analysis of 2D frames is typically to integrate it to 1D. And so you can create an integration cursor, integrate. And then here's the integrated data. It looks just like what you get in the preview here. So let me make this black so it's a little bit easier to see. Once you have the integrated data, then there is a sort of tool to sort of identify which crystal phases are present based on sort of the peaks that appear and the peak positions, um, as well as the peak intensities, the relative intensities. So it's kind of like a fingerprinting technique for different minerals. So if I open search match, you can see, all right, so the biggest peak corresponds to quartz. And then if you want to, you can sort of gray it out and search on the remainder. And then we see we have sort of a, maybe a spinel phase. And so each of these phases that I think is a good match, I can, I can check the box and it'll add it to the list. And so then I can sort of get a complete list of the phases that are present um, in this ceramic material. So here we have an albite, which is a feldspar. Um, next one on the list is hematite. Um, next one on the list is dolomite. This one doesn't really look like maybe it's a good match, so I won't select it. So this is sort of how you can do sort of phase ID, um, just taking a 2D x-ray pattern from a small spot. So then what you might be interested in is, all right, so that's, that's the bare ceramic. What if I measure sort of the, the glazed area? Um, are there going to be any differences or not? And it's actually quite simple because you've already got the sample up and aligned. So all you do is move to click, click to move, move to this position until you get to a glazed region. So this is a pretty good spot. Um, turn on the laser to make sure the sample height is right. So this is a very sort of non-even sample. So it's important to set the Z height at every position. So click and hold the Z slider until the laser is in the center of the camera image. You can see the images coming into focus. And I overshot it a little bit, but that's pretty much it. So now it's centered and just collect another scan. So just to show you what the ceramic image looks like, or the, the painted region looks like. I mean, without doing any sort of analysis at all, you can already see there's peaks missing, and then there's other peaks that are appearing. So there's a lot of different different crystal phases present. There's also sort of this this hump in the background, which might correspond to some sort of glassy phase in the in the glazed region that's not present in the bare region. 
So another thing we could do, as I mentioned before, we could flip it over and then look at sort of the different, different painted regions, so different colors, maybe the yellow or the red or the blue, the white next to the blue, and see if there's any different pigments that are going to create these different colors. And so just like before, we set the sample up here. And then in the camera image, we could just, just driving to the center again. So we can see that, all right, here we are coming sort of on maybe the central part where the nose is. And so we could measure here and then click to move, measure to other colors, and just collect data very iteratively, very simply. And just to sort of show you what it looks like, I've already done this as well. Here's an example for, um, like the on the nose region, you can see the 2D pattern looks like this. Um, some very sharp peaks. Then if I look at the, the red lips, clearly we have ring diffraction rings in, in different places. Or if I check one of the orange regions around the outside, um, it's different again. So just showing the overlay of the integrated data, you can see each each pigment has different different crystallites, different crystal phases present, uh, which you can just find instantly by targeting those regions um, using an instrument like this. Um, so yeah, so that's sort of XRD for cultural artifacts for looking at small features of interest. And um, as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so yeah, thanks for joining.